academy is roughly 200 players. The earliest age that they come into the academy is seven years old. Um, there's the real debate as to what age you should bring young children in. They then work their way through the various age groups and they get signed at under 11s as the first team that we sign them at. Um, from under 11s to under sort of 16s, they're school boys and at that point we have our Berkeley school programme where they do 15 hours a week of contact time. Um, after that, they then get the professional uh, area, so they have an under 18s team and a reserve team, and there's a one strand coaching philosophy that runs all the way from the top right down to the bottom. Well, it took us quite a while to change, and our football, we're really quite proud of our football methodology. So, we, we worked with a, a model called tactical periodisation, which is quite well known throughout the world now, but we modified it for age specificity for younger players, but also in a way that we can look at our behaviours uh, for a young player. So for example, we don't expect a young player to do what an older player can do, but the behaviours they have must then relate to our game model further down the line. So our starting point was to create our game model. So if you watch a Rangers team play, you should see a team that dominates the football, passes through the thirds, has got a real high energy press, wins the ball back quickly, um, but, has, but, but has possession, but purposeful possession, so not possession just for the sake of it. It should be exciting, it should be dynamic and creative. Those are the things that we look for in a Rangers team. We then broke that down further and said, right, what are the four key moments of the game? So we're either in possession, out of possession, transition to attack or transition to defend. And then from there, they provide our learning objectives that we then go and teach. For our younger players, I say it's more about behaviours, then it becomes more about the game. And we break it down into ball, game, body and mind. And those are the four sort of key corners, if you like, of player development that we look at when we're developing young players. We have a thing called um, Rangers Performance Coaching Culture, and we've got a member of staff who's just dedicated to rolling that out. So each coach has their own action plan, and we say, right, if you're an under-14 coach, who's the best under-14 coach in the world? What does he do that you don't do? What's the barriers to stop you doing what he does? And we then invest in our staff uh, through monthly and services, through their own action plan, through conferences, through we film our coaches a lot, we feed back to them. But what we have is we've got an environment where all our staff want to learn, so they're really open. So it could be quite intimidating at first when you've been filmed and you're sitting with four or five of your peers who are feeding back to you, but peer mentoring is a big part of what we do. So, so we must invest in the coaches, they must understand what we're trying to achieve, what our game model looks like. One of the big things for us as well is decision makers. So when we look at football in the UK compared to football on the continent, we think that they produce better decision makers than we do. Now that comes from the planning and preparation of your sessions. So the session becomes the teacher rather than the coach having to have lots of interventions during the session. And that's a big part of our education for our coaching staff as well. Yeah, the game model is always evolving because what we're looking at is I suppose when you start off with that, you look at what the history of your club is, you look at the history of football in the country, but you look at what the top end of the modern game looks like, not now, but in 10 years time, and say, right, if we're producing players who hopefully play for Rangers in the Champions League one day, what do we have to give them to go and, to go and uh, reach that level? So every drill that a coach does on the pitch should relate to our game model. There's never a passing practice for the sake of a passing practice or a possession for the sake of a possession. It must relate back to how we want to play. And a lot of that subliminal teaching goes on with the players where we want it to become second nature. So we believe that it's our job to get them from sort of back to the, maybe what we call the, the create phase is the top end of the pitch. We've got a control phase is the middle end of the pitch and a construct phase is the first third of the pitch. We give them lots of patterns, we give them lots of um, I guess behaviours to work through the first two thirds of the pitch but when they get in that final third of the pitch we want a young player that's creative and we take away all the complex decisions that actually all they're thinking about is me, the ball and the opponent and how we're going to beat that opponent. Yeah, I think if we look at Ross McCrory, Glenn Middleton, I think we've had four debuts this season because Stevie Kelly's made his debut, Sergio Takai has made his debut, and Jordan Houston's made their debut. And I think what's probably interesting for each of them, with, if we relate it back to our football methodology, is they've all required different things. So if we go back to the four corners, ball, game, body and mind, if we look at Stevie Kelly at the moment, he's magnificent in the ball corner, he's got a great mindset. He's understanding the game is superb, but right now he's doing a lot of extra work to make sure we get his body right so that he can compete at the top end of football. Ross McCrory, slightly different, great athlete, but of course a lot of his work centres around game, 
um, and probably ball. So each of the players are different and each of the players have their own individual IPT programme. So they basically look and say, right, over a 12 week period, what am I going to be working on? Why am I working on it? How am I going to get to where I, I want to get to? That's reviewed with the coaches and that almost becomes their Bible as to how they're going to get better. Yeah, well, I think I think what we've done over the last few years is that we've actually invited lots of coaches in to see what we do. And a lot of clubs can be quite defensive about their content and don't want to share it and show other people. But we want to get better every day. So if we invite somebody in now, in six months' time, our content will have moved on anyway. So therefore, we're quite happy to share what we do. Now, the coaching manual will allow us to share that to a bigger audience. We'll be really open about what we do at the different age groups. With a lot of research and a lot of time and a lot of practice with inter football methodology and hopefully that benefits coaches elsewhere. But again, it'll be an ever-evolving thing because what they get now will be different from what we get in six months, from a year, as football changes and our academy changes.